plane curves. Right? Based on plane curves. So in under plane curves, under plane curves, we have conic sections. Right? We have conic sections. Conic sections. So under conic sections, you have. We are going to see the next one. We have cycloids, cycloidal curve. Third one, the pendulum. This three will be the first half of the first unit. Three. We start with conic sections. So under conic section, you can see. This right plane curves under conic section. So this. These curves will be obtained from a right regular cone. Sectioning a right regular cone by sectioning a right regular cone, we can obtain this curve. So first of all, we will see what is right regular cone. The conic sections. So the various conic section, that is circles, isosceles, triangle, ellipse, parabola, hyperbola, right? Rectangle, hyperbola, okay. These are all obtained from a cone. Okay, the cone is the right regular cone. I am considering a right regular. Right regular in the sense what? Right angle. Right angle, okay. The axis is perpendicular to the base. Okay, we have to consider a cone. A cone which is. So this is the front view and drawing. The axis of the cone, the axis of the cone is this. You can see the axis of the base are perpendicular. Then it is called a right regular cone. Right, we have an oblique cone. Okay, the axis is inclined to the base. So for a cone section, we have to consider a right regular cone. So to obtain a circle, suppose I how should I section a cone and obtain a circle? Okay, if I cut a cone. Parallel to its base, like this, I am introducing a plane. Okay, parallel to its base. So once I cut this cone parallel to its base and removing of removing the top portion, I can see the true shape of the section. Okay, cut section. The true shape of the section it will be a circle. The true shape will be. See perpendicular to the cut surface. The cut surface is this. Perpendicular to the cut surface. If I look at the section, it will be a circle. So when you know circle, it is when a right regular cone section parallel. When a right regular cone quickly you may know when a right regular cone section parallel to its base. The obtained true shape of section is a circle. The obtained true shape of section is a circle, right? Then isosceles triangle. Coming to isosceles triangle, if I section the same right regular cone passing through its point, this point is called apex. Passing through apex, okay, and passing through its base. Suppose I section the cone like this. Any orientation, right? Passing through its apex and its base. Once I have removed this right portion, okay. What kind of section I will see? I can see a triangle. That too, it is a right isosceles triangle. You make a note quickly. You make a note on your own. Isosceles triangle. How I have to cut a right angle of cone? You write it. The sentence of sin. The orientation of the plane you have to vary. When I when a right regular cone is by a plane section plane passing through the apex and its base, passing through its apex and base, the true shape of section obtained is a isosceles plane. Right? Coming to ellipse. So this is a circle I can obtain. 
inclined to the axis hyperbola it is not parallel to the generator it is inclined to the axis the smaller inclination and inclined to the base i will get a hyperbola one more thing rectangular hyperbola if i cut the cone parallel to the axis right i will get a these are all the true shape of section which is up time hyperbola this is hyperbola okay
I'm considering rate. So distance of the moving point, moving point from focus divided by distance of the same moving point from what is the definition? From directly. Okay. So this is the distance. Say, say this is moving point M. So this is the distance F M and distance of the same point from the direct ring. So this is M that right. So my F M by M M dash right. So distance of the moving point from direct ring. So I can treat it as Fm by Mm dash. So this value it will be constant for any conic section. Okay. Conic sections. Okay, this will be constant. Okay, the constant value will be for different sections. This will be right. So I get the same thing. So this is B, this is M dash. So I can see the same point, just keep on moving. Okay, wherever it moves, the distance will be constant, it will be in a constant ratio. So it's, once it comes and it move, comes here at the vertex, what will happen to the eccentricity? It will be zero. Fb by Vm dash. Okay, it will be, I can write it again. So F V by Vm dash. Okay, both are same. So the ratio is going to be same. Wherever this point moves on the curve, so the ratio is going to be a constant, that is an eccentricity, right? So if it is equal Vm by Vm dash also is same. Right. So this is about the point section terminal. We move on to LH. Right. For LH, what will be the eccentricity? You make a note eccentricity, you make next topic LH. L is for L is. The eccentricity will be less than 1. So I can say the eccentricity for L is, it is always less than 1. Okay. The eccentricity if it is less than 1, that is less than 1 in the sense. This is the rapid. 2 by 3, 3 by 4, okay. 5 by 8. Seven. Okay. Any any value it is which is less than one, then it is it will form a ellipse. Okay. That eccentricity will form a ellipse. So how I can define similarly you can make a note for eccentricity for ellipse. Here you can note for ellipse eccentricity is less than one for parabola parabola. Eccentricity is equal to 1. Okay. So this distance and this distance will be equal for parabola. Right. So that is the Vf and Vm dash will be equal for parabola. But in ellipse, this will be smaller, this will be bigger. Right. For parabola, both are equal. Right. For hyperbola, hyperbola E is greater than 1. So which one will be greater? This portion will be greater. Vf will be greater. This will be smaller. Okay, for hyperbola. Okay, the ratio will be given. So similarly, you can make a note. Okay, you can find out how it is. Okay, for circle, LHS, eccentricity is zero. To find out how it is zero. Okay, for circle, eccentricity is zero. Now, we we'll move on to the definition of LHS. Go one by one. Ellipse, the eccentricity value is less than 1. So we make a definition here for an ellipse always. It is again a plane curve generated by a point moves in such a way that at any position, at any position, this point, okay, moving point, the sum of the distances from the Fixed point is always a constant. What it says? The sum of the distances of from the fixed point. For any, how many focus you will have? 
do focus. I have a focus here. Similarly, I have another focus here. Right. So this is F1, this is F2. Right. I will have two focus for LAs. Okay. This, if I, what it says, wherever the point is, okay, if I join this F to M and M to F2, these two distances, okay, if I sum it up, okay, FM and F1M plus F2M, it will be a constant. It will be a constant. Wherever this point moves, okay, wherever this point moves, it will be a constant. Okay, so that is the definition of this ellipse. Right. So I can say this constant, okay, this constant, it will be nothing but the distance equal to bd dash. It will be the distance between the two vertex, b, b dash. That's what it says. The constant equal to the major axis of the ellipse. The constant which is this and this, so it is the equivalent of the major axis of the ellipse. Right. You can see this ellipse in a simple video will be more clear for you how this ellipse is constructed.
once I have produced, this is external, this is internal to your body. Okay, once the laser source is left the place off through the elliptical reflector, it definitely goes to the exactly to the another focus where you have the stone in your kidney. Okay, it will remove of the kidneys without surgery. Okay, it is used in medicine. So similar to this thing, I can convert my rays to a particular focal point, okay, using an elliptical reflector. Okay, it is used as an elliptical reflector in many fields and whispering galaxies it is used. Apart from that, you have elliptical gears. Okay, elliptical gear as you can see in cycle, right, and uh, some of the textile machineries will have elliptical gears to produce variable speeds. Okay, we will be using elliptical, we will be learning in this thing. And planetary orbits in physics, it will be evolving in an elliptical orbit only. Okay, any methods to how to draw the ellipse. Okay. How to draw the ellipse. Quickly we'll see. We have the first method is called eccentricity method. What we have seen this is the first method is eccentricity method using this eccentricity value is given to you. Right. The eccentricity value is given to you and the distances from either from the focus to the vertex or vertex to the Directrix or directrix to the focus, these distances will be given to you. You are asked to draw the construct and ellipse. Okay, that is an eccentricity method. You can say you take this problem, draw the locus of a point, P moving so that the draw the locus of a point, P moving. Quickly note down the problem. Draw the locus of the point P moving so that the ratio of the distance from focus, the ratio of the distance from focus F to its directrix, ratio of the distance, ratio is 2 by 3. The distance from the focus to the directrix is given 42 millimeter. Right. Also draw tangent and normal at any point on the ellipse. Also draw tangent and normal at any point on the ellipse. Three parts. 
okay, in such a way that I have to mark the birth text. For LH, from focus to the birth text, the distance will be smaller. From birth text to the direct mix, the distance will be larger. Okay, that is three parts. Okay, the overall length is 42 mm. So what I have to do to mark exactly the birth text, if it is 50 mm, if it is 50 mm, I can divide this, say this m, I can divide this fm into 5 equal parts. Okay, 10, 10 mm I can easily divide it. So, in the first, last two divisions, from four that the two divisions, okay, after two divisions I can mark my vertex. Okay, what you have to do, any eccentricity ratio is given, listen, you sum it up the numerator and denominator, right? So what is the value you are getting? 5. So the distance from the direct fix to the focus, you divide that distance into 5 equal divisions. So now this is 42 mm. I have to divide it into 5 equal divisions. How I can do it? 8.5 is fraction you don't have in your scale. So you have a constructional procedure. Okay, dividing equally, dividing a length. Okay, in number of parts. So what is that procedure? So again it is a constructional work. So if it is a finite length, 50 mm means I can 10, 10 mm I can divide. Since it is 42 mm, so what I can do is I can go for a constructional procedure to divide this with Fm into 5 equal divisions. So this I can draw an arbitrary inclined line. Okay, I can run arbitrary inclined line. This is an arbitrary inclination, the constructional procedure. Okay, any finite value in your compass, I can divide it into five equal divisions. Okay, any finite divisions, I can divide it into five equal divisions. Right, see, this is my first division, second division, third, fourth, and fifth. So the last fifth division, okay, this this standard is arbitrary, the length what you have taken, finite length, okay, that is an arbitrary length. If now you take it as 10 mm, okay, 10, 10 mm, 5 divisions in the inclined line I can measure. The fifth one, the last division, I can join it to the focus, okay, the other end of this original line, okay, the original line is mm, okay, that I am trying to divide it into equally into 5 divisions, so the other end is f, so I am joining this to f. Okay, I will have a line from 5 to F. Okay, to fix your graph, then, okay, what I, I have to draw, I have to draw parallel lines to 5F at from 4, 3, 2, all other divisions. Right. So, you fix your graph, then, how you can do it? You fix your graph, then, one scale to this line, 5F line. Okay, to fix it, then move your graph to the other division locations. I can, it will. Divide equally to the original lines. Right. So I can move my graph here. So just to draw a parallel line. I'm going to divide the original line BF into five divisions. You need not draw all the inclined lines. What I told you can keep move your graph there just for this location you mark it. That is more than enough. Okay. For your knowledge, I am drawing this. Right. In your, these are all construction. It is not necessary. So, final intention is only the ellipse. The ellipse alone should be dark. Okay. So, this thing, the direct x and the axis should be visible in x pencil. should be visible in the expenses. The another thing should be visible is only your LH. The remaining thing, these are all constructional work. Lightly do it in your 2H pencil. Right. Now, where should I mark my vertex? Where should I mark my vertex? In the third division from the left, okay, or from the right, it is second division. Okay. So, I have a P is two parts, Vm is three parts, right, Fb, so this is from focus, it is the second division, so this is my vertex, 
that should be marked the vertex. Wrongly, it should not mark. Suppose you have taken third division from focus, what color we will get? It will be three by two. You will be getting hyperbola. Right? Is it clear? So if this distance is equally divided, you will be getting a parabola. If this distance is equally divided, then you will be getting a parabola. So if this distance is lesser, okay, then you will get an ellipse. Okay? Is it clear? So marking vertex, you should be careful. Okay, wrongly you should not mark. Instead of 2 by 3, you should not mark it as 3 by 2. Then you won't get ellipse at all. Right? So once you have marked, this is a very essential stage. Okay, well, you have to carefully mark the focus vertex. Once it is done, then the procedures. Okay, this is same for all parabola, hyperbola, everything. Right? After this, the procedures are same for parabola, hyperbola. Right? So what I have to do? This is the focus. V L equal to V V dash such that Vf is equal to Vv dash such that I have to draw a vertical line from V. I have to draw a vertical line like this. This distance Vf is equal to this Vv dash. Is it clear? I have to draw a vertical line Vv dash from vertex. Okay, it is a construction line. This distance is equal to this Vf. So you have to measure it in your compass and you have to mark it. Okay. Because it is not finite distance, you have to measure it in your compass and you have to transfer it. This is another next procedure. Once you have done this, what you have to do? You join this M to V dash and draw a line inclined line to V dash from M to V dash to draw a Line, line, like this. Right. This is the next one. From here, through V dash, you have to draw an inclined line. Right. So after this, the first step. Then after this, this is a vertex. Vertex is what? That is the location where the curve is going to intersect the axis. Okay. From here, my curve is going to intersect the axis. This is one vertex. For ellipse, I will have another vertex, V1. So how I can arrive at the another vertex? We have a procedure. Okay. So what you can do is, from focus, so this is one vertex. The another vertex, how I can obtain it? From focus, I can draw a 45 degree line. 45 degree line, say, from focus. So I can draw a 45 degree line. See, it goes and it meets it meets the already drawn inclined line through V dash. Okay, this inclination is 45 degree from focus that is. So once this location where it intersects with the slant line, that if I project it vertically to the axis. That is the location of my another vertex. So my ellipse has to fall in between these two vertex. So my ellipse, I have to draw it in between two these vertex. Right. So how to draw, get the elliptical points. Okay, you will see. So what you have to do from vertex, okay, any arbitrary distance, okay, now you take it as 10 mm. Okay, from vertex, for 10 mm, you draw vertical lines. Construction vertical lines, constructional vertical lines <coughs> like this.
connect to it. I'm drawing it between vertex to vertex. I'm constructing vertical lines. Okay, at a distance of approximately 10 mm. Right. Not less than 10 mm, you will be getting more points. Okay, have it as approximately 10 mm distance from vertex to another vertex. I can draw vertical lines. See, for the first from the vertex, the first vertical line. I am marking as 1, 1 dash where it intersects from the to the axis and the, to the inclined line what I have drawn from the directrix ok, so direct from the axis and the directrix the distance I am marking it as 1, 1 dash <coughs> similarly I can mark it the other vertical lines 2, 2 dash right, 3, 3 dash ok, this distances are very much essential, listen the 1 1 dash distance you can measure it in your compass the 1 1 dash distance you can measure it in your compass so this distance you can take it ok it is measured from this vertical line 1 1 dash vertical line so I am measuring it in my compass and you keep your focus always as a center for any elliptical points, to get any elliptical points you have to keep your focus as center the focus is this the focus is this right so one one dash as radius focus F as center I have to get an R okay, get an division on one one dash line is it clear? one one dash line so this is my this is my radius, focus as center, I can get my divisions above 1 and below. Center is my above 1 and below. Is it clear? So you measure 1 1 dash in your compass, keep focus as center, cut, get two divisions on 1 1 dash line, vertical line. So on the above the vertical axis line, below the axis line, I will get two elliptical points right so one point is vertex another point next point is this one ok similarly the same procedure is followed for all other divisions so the next division what I have to do two two dash as and you measured in your compass then which is my center again focus for all these divisions you have to use your focus as center focus as center then where I have to cut two two dash vertical line right is it clear for 2 to dash vertical line, I have to cut 2 to dash and measuring from focus, I am cutting it on 2 to dash line. So I will get here. Is it clear? The same procedure, it should be followed up to the next vertex. Right. What will happen if you have uh, less than 10 mm? You have to take more divisions. Okay. Keep approximately 10 mm. Right. If the distances are very vertex to vertex, this is very small. You can have it 7, 8 mm. Right. So if, uh, if these distances are very small, you will have a very smooth curve. Right. So I can similarly you can get other divisions of my array. Slowly converge it and it ends to this. Right. So by connecting these points, I can get an ellipse. Okay, this ellipse. So how to finish this ellipse? First of all, you go use your two hinge pencil, draw it as a light one, try to get a smooth curve. Okay, why to a very light one you try to get a smooth curve? Once it is you are getting a smooth curve, then you can use your hex pencil to darken it. Right. So, you see in this, normally you won't get a smooth curve. This is your skill, try to get a smooth curve. Right. Now, roughly, if it is a 2 inch pencil, it is. Once you 
overcome this, we can go for darkening using your edge pencil. Line. 
vertex 1, say I can say this is vertex 1, this is vertex 2, from vertex 1 to first division, from vertex 1 to first division I can measure it in my compass, what I can do it, okay, from vertex 1 to first division, use your focus 1 as center, I can cut a division above, and same thing I can cut it below, right. This is one distance, that is vertex 1 to division 1. Okay, that distance use measuring that, keeping focus 1 as center, I can cut two segments above and below. So what I can do is another the same first division, the distance I have to measure it from vertex 2. That is another distance. Okay. So this distance that is vertex 2 to division 1, I can measure it in my compass. What I can do it? Then I can keep that distance, focus 2 as center, what I can do it? I can cut a division, it will intersect here. Above and below. Right. Nothing but I can do nothing but this. Using that construction. So this distance is nothing but my vertex to first division. This distance is nothing but my vertex 2 to first division. Right. How we have got the ellipse? You have seen. So this vertex to first division is my this division. Vertex 2 to first division is my this division. So similarly, I can go for other divisions. What I can do? I can go for the second division. Okay. From vertex 1 to second division, I can measure it. Okay. I can get an intersection above and below. Okay. So vertex 2 to second division, I can measure it above and below. I can get it. I can get elliptical points, if I join these points, I will get a smooth from vertex <coughs> vertex if I join We go through the textbook, okay, we can select this problem.
concentric circles drawn for the diameter of the minor axis and the major axis. Right. What I have to do? These two concentric circles, I can divide it. Conveniently, I can divide it into 12 equal segments. 12 equal segments in the sense, the overall circle is 360 degree. How I can divide it into 12 equal segments? I have to divide it into 30-30 degrees. Okay. This will be frequently you will be using, dividing a circle into 12 divisions. How I can do it? In only two setups in my drafter, I can divide the circle into 12 divisions. Only two setups. How I can do it? So, this is my normal zero setting horizontal scale. I can move my horizontal scale of my drafter to 30 degree. That is my first setup. 30 degree if I set my horizontal scale, what will happen? One scale is 30 degree. Using that, the same scale, I can extend it in the negative side also. See here. Okay, this segment is 30 degree. Similarly, this segment is 30 degree. Design. The another scale of my first setting. This is 30 degree means what is the another scale inclination to the vertical line? Again, it is 30 degree. Vertical scale. See, vertical scale. So this is my drafter. Once 30 degree I said, one scale will look like this, another scale will be like this. Okay. So horizontal scale 30 degree inclined to the horizontal line. Vertical scale will be 30 degree inclined to the vertical line. Okay. Using horizontal scale, I have got two segments. Using vertical scales on the same setting, I can draw, I can get another two segments like this. Have it down in the first two segments. Right. First 30 degree setting itself, I have got four 30 degree segments. You move on the drafter to an another 30 degree setting, that is 60 degree. If I tilt my drafter to 60 degree, the drafter will be like this. The drafter will be like this. Is it clear? My drafter will be like this. This is my horizontal scale of my drafter. It is 30 degree to horizontal. Vertical scale of my drafter it is uh, sorry, 60 degree to vertical. Right. So in the same setting, I can draw my another two segments. Okay. The same 60 degree line, I can extend it downwards. I will get it like this. I will get it like this. So easily I can divide a circle into 12 equal segments. Okay. By having two settings in my drafter. Okay, 30 degree one setting I can get four divisions. Another 30 degree, 60 degree setting I can have another division. Right, totally I have divided this circle into 12 equal segments. So all the segments are 30 degree. Right. So you see here, now I am going to mark this is my zero. This is my first division. So similarly this is my O, 1. This is my 1, 1 dash. This is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, and then again 1. Right. Similarly, the outer bigger circle for the major diameter, I can divide, I can notate it as 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 10, 1, 11, 1, 2, 12, 1, yeah, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 12, are, say, you have any doubt so far? So just I have drawn two circles to the two axes, right? I have divided into 12 divisions, okay? Equally I have divided into 12 divisions, I have noted, right? Constructing ellipse is simple here. What I can do? From these divisions of the outer circle, bigger circle, from these divisions, okay, this is my location, this is my location. You see, above the axis, what I can do, design carefully, I can draw a vertical line. Using my drafter, I can draw a vertical line. I can draw a vertical line here. So I can draw a vertical line, nothing but the same line. Okay, here I can draw a vertical line. I can draw a vertical line. So, right. Vertical line is the axis. 
Ah, vertical to the axis. Vertical in the sense it is an axis. No, it should touch the axis or No, just to draw a vertical line, how I have drawn. Draw vertical lines from the points, okay, all the points, okay. Vertical above the axis, you draw vertically downwards. Okay. From the outer circle, below the axis, you draw vertical lines. Okay, you erect vertical lines upward. Okay. Above the axis, you draw vertical lines downwards. Okay, from this below segments, below the axis, you erect vertical lines upward. See here, this is the same vertical line. This is the same vertical line. Right. Have you got it? Now, so this is the next procedure. Then what you have to do it? So this lines, vertical lines, it is drawn from the outer circle segments. Okay. From the inner circle segments, you draw horizontal lines. Okay. Horizontal lines to the left and horizontal line to the right. This is my inner circle. Okay. See, the inner circle segment. So I am drawing a horizontal line. So this is the, I am drawing a horizontal line. It will be here. See here, I am drawing a horizontal line here. This here, I am drawing a horizontal line here. Okay, so I have a lot of points. So similarly from here, I can draw a horizontal line horizontally. Right side. Right. Now, this intersection location is so very simple. So vertical lines from the outer circle, horizontal lines from the inner circle division. They will meet at one point. Okay, that is the point, nothing but my elliptical points. Okay, the elliptical points are now. This is my major axis here, here, here. Then the other point is here. The minor axis is here, is here. Right here. This is the point, if I join it, I will get a ellipse. Okay, this is the constant circle with that. Given is 
How much is mass? 120 meter. 120 meter means how much mass? 1,000 meter. 120 meter in the sense? 12,000. 120,000. Right? Right? 1 meter is 1000 millimeter. So 120 meter in the sense 120,000 millimeter. If I scale it, so this. So what is the scale? You have to use it. 1 is the 1000. So while drawing this diagram, you have to write a scale. Scale is 1 is the 1000. You have to write it 1 is to 1000. So, dimensioning you have to do it as it is. You can measure it for 120 mm and you can draw it. Right? See, how long is that? So, it is given a rectangle. It is given a rectangle of size of major axis and a minor, minor axis. Okay. So, the major axis of 120 mm meters and minor axis of 60 meters. So, what you have to do in, in this procedure? We just consider the rectangle for 60 by 120 by 60. 120 by 60. I can construct a rectangle. It's also simple. You see, this is 120 mm. This is 16 mm, right? What I have measured is mm. In mm, we are drawing is mm. We have used a scale. Scale is 1 is to 1000, right? See here, similar to this, it is simple. Similar to concentric method, it is simple. So just to follow this procedure, so you can mark this as A, B, C rectangles. A, B, C, D rectangle of size 125, 60. That is size of the major and minor axis. Then you divide this rectangle into two half and drawing a major and minor axis and dividing the rectangle like this. Right. This is my major axis. I can say this is x, x. This is say x, x, 1, y, y, 1. Right. Is clear? So what I am going to do? Just, listen, just this portion of a smaller rectangle you consider, right? So I am going to use this as origin. I am going to consider this as origin. Okay. Right. This as origin. So this length say this is center O. Okay. So this X O, I am considering X O as X axis, X D as O X axis. Okay. So along x4, I have to divide that length. What is that length x4 length? 60. Right. What is this xd length? It is 30. Right. So this 60 mm, I have to divide it into equal number of divisions. Any equal number of divisions. Say I am going to divide for easiness, I am dividing this into 3 divisions. So 20, 20. So I am dividing this into 3 divisions. This is 1, this is 2. So for 20, 20, I am dividing this into two divi three divisions. This is my first division, this is my second division. So totally the 60 mm, it's the x4 length is divided into three equal divisions. The same number of equal divisions, the vertical axis, that is xd length is, should be divided. So this is 30 mm, I have to divide it into three. 10 each, okay, 10 divisions each, I can divide it. 3 divisions. Okay, this is my first division, this is my second division. So the marking is very important. See here, I have considered this x as origin. So from here, this is my first division, this is my second division. From here, this is my first division, this is my second division. Otherwise, you will be getting confused. That's why I am repeatedly saying, okay, from here, this is first division, from here, this is first division. Right. So this segment alone I have divided, the horizontal and vertical lines I have equally divided into equal number of divisions. Okay, so this is four divisions means I have to divide this line also four divisions. So clear. Now how all I have to do the next one. Just join this one and two divisions. 
from Y. This is the location I am considering and I am going to consider Y Y dash location. So from Y location, I, am, I have to draw a line having a slant line joining Y Y dash. Similarly, this. Similarly, from Y dash, I have to draw a line through 1 and 2 of this horizontal line. Okay, through 1, I can draw a line to meet a location at a location of this already drawn slant line. That is Y to 1 line, right? It will meet Y dash to 1, positive 1, it will meet a location, at a location that is a elliptical point location. Similarly, the same second division I can connect it from Y dash. It has to intersect the second line. Okay, already done second line. That is my another division of my elliptical ellipse. Is it clear? So this is one quarter of ellipse I have I can be able to draw now. This is one end. This is another end. I have two points. If you divide it, more divisions you will get more points. Right. So two divisions I have divided. Okay. What is it? Here we just okay. Once I have joined them through this. This is a quarter portion of my LN. Can anybody construct the other quarters? How I can easily construct the other quarters? The same procedure can be used, that is one thing. I can still, I can easily, I can construct. Okay, but say, this is P1, this is P2. Still I can, so this is both the, all the quarters are symmetric. What I can do it? It is symmetric, I am telling. So all the quarters are symmetric about this x x axis and y y axis. Y axis, okay. So original, major and minor axis. This curve is symmetric. What, how I can get this P1, P2 here? How I can get this P1, P2 in this quarter? Huh? Yeah, I can draw, I can symmetrically get these points here. I can symmetrically get these points here. How I can do it? I can draw a horizontal line. I can draw a horizontal line. How it will be symmetrically I can transfer? How I can symmetrically I can transfer it? This is my axis, y y axis. Okay, above y y axis, I can measure this distance. What I can do it? I can transfer it here. I can transfer it here. This is my P2. Or more P2, right? The same distance. This one I can transfer it from the axis. I can measure it. I can transfer it here. So symmetrically I can get it. P1. What I can do it to transfer it symmetrically downwards? I can draw vertical lines, I can transfer all the points to the x-axis downwards. What is this distance? I can transfer it here. What is this distance? I can transfer it here. So once I have transferred all the four points, I can easily draw this ellipse. Is it clear? So only one quarter you can concentrate and you can draw it. Other quarters you can symmetrically you can draw it. Okay. So I draw horizontal lines and I draw vertical lines from these points. Get symmetrical locations, I can end up with a perfect element. Right. So, this is called oblong method. So, four methods you have eccentricity method. Another one is eccentricity method, you will depend the eccentricity value. Another method is Focus method that is from the definition of the parabola ellipse. Okay, from the definition of the ellipse, we can construct the so the distance between the vertex will be given, distance between the focus will be given. I can divide the distance from the vertex 1 and vertex 2 the same division. I can measure it, I can get it. Focus method, then concentric circle method is the easier one. 
major axis diameter circle I have to draw it, minor axis smaller circle I have to draw it, I have to divide it into 12 divisions from the top circle, okay. bigger circle I have to draw vertical lines downwards, divisions, smaller circles I have to draw vertical lines, horizontal lines, okay. So this vertical and horizontal lines will mean, okay, it will give you the elliptical points, right. So then oblong method I have to construct a rectangle for my major and minor axis. So I can divide it into major and minor axis. One quarter I can consider, okay, go to the left extreme, that is you consider that as an axis. This length I can divide it in any equal number of divisions. Okay, that same number of divisions, this vertical line also should be divided. So the 60 is divided into 3 equal divisions. This 30 is divided into 3 equal divisions. Mark it from this origin 1 to give the numbering. From this origin give the numbering 1 to. Right. Join this 1 and 2 from Y. Okay. With a line. From Y to 2, 1 and 2 on the horizontal line. It will be the already transplant line at those locations. Okay. That will nothing but even elliptical points. Once you have got the quarter elliptical points, I can end up the other three quarter by drawing symmetric and transferring symmetrical points okay along major and minor axis about major and minor axis I can symmetrically transfer it is it clear? I have four methods right to draw an ellipse parabola and move on to parabola right quick simply you will simply you will I am not going to teach in parabola Right, you are going to do it. So just parabola, you will see what is parabola. In parabola, make a note. Parabola, what is the eccentricity for parabola? One. one. Right, eccentricity is one. That is nothing but the distance from the focus. This is, if it is two parts, this is also two parts. Okay. So the distance from focus to this is one. For parabola, eccentricity is one. Okay, that is defined. You see, it is a plane curve generated by a point which moves in such a way that at any position, its distance from a fixed point and its distance from the fixed straight line are constant. Offset is always equal. Right. So that is nothing but one. Eccentricity is one. So you come into the applications of parabola. See. I have heaters, okay, I have microphones, then dish in this is not this, uh, dish antenna, okay, DDH you have what you have in the bowl, okay, they are in elliptical shape, you have elliptical dishes, you have parabolic dishes, right, so dish, then suspension bridges, okay, they are like using parabolas, you see the application, heater, heater you can see, heater is nothing but a fan, okay, Cold countries, people will be using heaters. So it's like a fan. See? So inside fan, okay, inside that heater, so there is a parabolic plate will be there. Okay, parabolic plate will be there, reflector plate. So I will have a heating element, I will have a heating element at the location of my what? Focus. Focus of the parabola at the location of my focus. Have a heater. What will happen if the heater is heating element generates the heat? Okay, the heat radiation will fall on the elliptical, sorry, parabolic plate. Okay, reflector plate. Once it hits the <coughs> parabolic reflector plate, the reflected rays it will be parallel. It will come to parallel. Okay. So wherever the person is sitting, he can tilt it and he can get the Okay, he can get the hot Yeah. Is it clear? So the heater, heater, parabolic uh, reflector plates are used. And microphones you know. Okay, any sounds if you want to receive, I can have a parabolic shape. Okay. At the focus of that parabolic shape, you can see there is a mic. Okay, the sound, whatever sound wave comes and hits that parabolic uh, plane, it has to go to the focus. Parallel 
parallel comes somewhere, has to go to the focus of the parabolic shape. Okay, there I have the mic. Okay, it will result that the microphone is then dish, okay. So normally in your DTH, what you have in your bow, it will be a parabolic shape, elliptical shape also you have the parabolic shape in a focus location you have the receiver. Exactly at the focus of that parabola, parabolic dish. Okay, I will have my receiver. Whatever rays come, okay, signals come, it will be received by the receiver which is at a focus, which, which is in a in the focus. Right. Then in the suspension bridges, okay, any thread, any any cable or thread, if I tie it, okay, loosely I will tie it, it will form a parabolic shape. If I tie the uh, cable, it will form a parabolic shape. Okay. So in suspension bridges, it is used. You can see the suspension bridges, you have two towers. Okay, why we are going for suspension bridges? It's for longer span. You can use it go for suspension bridges. It is with a single cable, you can see it is with a single cable. Right. The cables are grounded. Okay. So this is the tower I have. So this is the bigger span. For a suspension bridges, I have a bigger fan. span. Okay. The cable is tied to the what is this deck where the load is taken. Okay. That is the bridge portion. Deck it is called. Okay. It is tied with the vertical wire uh, cables. So how? The tension is proportional. Once the load is taken, what will happen? Okay. Try to bend. The deck is try to bend due to the load. What will happen to this wire? There will be a tension in this vertical wire. Okay. It will be extended to this cable. The cable already is grounded. Cable is compressed. Okay. Cable is compressed. Stretch. Okay. Stretch through this. Due to that, what will happen to this tower? Tower will be compressed. There will be a compression and uh, Tension loads acting in this suspension bridges. Okay, suspension bridges it is through cables. The through cable will form a parabolic shape. Due to that parabolic shape. Parabolic optics and that ray is goes to the 
focal point of the hyperbolic objects. Okay. So similar kind of applications used in telescopes also we can have a optical lenses in the shape of parabolic and hyperbolic shapes. Right. Then you can have a cooling towers, natural draft cooling towers in uh, power plants and power plants okay the cooling towers huge cooling towers it looks like a, it will be in a parabol a hyperbolic shape the shape why this shape is it is to improve the cooling efficiency okay there will be a natural draft is that okay whatever air comes it will there will be a natural draft to take away the heat okay it will be in a parabol hyperbolic shape to improve the cooling efficiency this kind of shapes are established in cooling towers they will come across in the
Here we will have only one focus. The another focus says at infinity. Right? The another focus for the parabola, it is at infinity. Okay, we cannot find it. Right? So it will be one focus. So you need not find out the another vertex. Okay, it is an open curve. It is an open curve parabola. Okay, once you have finished this, what I have to do it? I have to from vertex to take any equal number of division. That is 10 mm I told. Okay, 10 mm you draw a vertical line. Right, then what I have to do it? Mark 1 on that. Mark 2 to that. Mark 3 to be that. Then what I have to do? One more time to measure it. Right. Use focus as center. Right. Cut it on one more time. One more time I measure it. Focus as center. Cut it above and below. Similarly, two to dash to measure it. From focus. <coughs> cut it above and below. Similarly, other segments, it is an open curve, two, three, four points, you can get it, you can connect it with your curve, that is nothing but your parabola, right? So, this is, I can connect it.
solve the hyperbola problem, try to solve it. Okay, do the parabola problem quickly. Quickly do it on your right.